Ventures. Today, I'll be talking about the evolution of corporate venture capital. So corporate venture capital, um, let's see what is corporate venture capital. So corporations are investing in outside startups and they, were, they are investing in outside startups because they are looking at a strategic value. They want to keep up with the trends and technology of the world. And they do not have a financial gain in most cases. They're looking for strategic partnerships through this corporate venture capital scheme that many of the corporations are adopting today. So let's look at some of the benefits that these corporations are expecting out of this corporate venture capital scheme. First of all, most of these corporations are very much interested in the new innovative business and technology schemes and models. So these startups can help them keep up with the latest trends and technology. If you rely on this scheme, this, this can easily become an extension of your R&D group in some sense. So when they're looking at this new technology, they come to know about new sectors, they come to know about new markets, they come to know about new industries. And, you know, as they start um, working with these startups, and in some cases, they're making investments from these corporate venture capital funds, in many cases, they're getting into a relationship. And ultimately, in many cases, uh, they are acquiring these startups. And so the MA is happening. And what we are seeing that these MNAs are much more successful than a direct MA where you have not made any strategic investment and you have not had a relationship. It's almost like you're dating someone before you are getting married with them in some sense. There are a different set of corporations who are also using this CVC to promote their own products and technology. That's another goal of having a CVC. Many of the traditional corporations, they're using CVC to work with the startups where they can promote their technology in the new type of product and business model that these startups are building or the startups are actually working on. So CVC can have different ways that a corporation can earn and get benefit from. So I'm gonna discuss a few different CVC models that we have seen in the market or that are in practice. The very first one that is the most common one that I have seen is that corporations are investing uh, from the balance sheet. Today, one of my goal would be, I'm gonna talk about these different models that we see as corporate venture capital models and then talk about their pros and cons and discuss that which one is best fit for you. So this first one, which is uh, the most common one that most of the corporations have had experience of uh, you know, using this model, where you are investing directly from your balance sheet. So in this model, you know, um, this investment is done by one of your employees. So, and in many cases, this employee might not be very knowledgeable about how this whole investment in a startup work. So in many cases, this is a very opportunistic, it's a, a need by need basis deal. And, you know, this is the most common um, method that the corporations are using today. So what are some of the shortcomings of you know, this model? So the first of all, there is no strategic you know, setup here. Um, you know, one of the business divisions within the corporations, they have found out this is a great corporation, this is a great startup, let's invest in them. Um, it is a very, very, you know, kind of like a short term goal and it's opportunistic. In many cases, it works. In many cases, it does not work. The minute it does not work, then we see that that investment has no attention um, and nobody is taking care of that. In many cases, that ends up in losses and failure. Um, and in many cases, as I mentioned, the, the corporate employee from a certain business unit who is making this investment from the balance sheet might not have enough experience to actually nurture this investment and make that investment itself a success and save the original investment. So um, one of the biggest problems that this, you know, inexperienced employees sometimes have, they cannot help the startups with their fundraising or business development or even their exit. And the other thing that happens because there is a, like a pretty 
um, you know, regular turnover in most of the large corporations, the investment they have made, in many cases, they cannot actually, you know, go ahead and, and, and continue to help them. So the biggest problem of this model where you are investing from your balance sheet is that <clears throat> there is a big liability factor there. Um, as you know that you know, many of these corporations are public corporations and when their investment from their balance sheet, many cases you, know, you might have a um, conflict with the startups and it can become a, a legal liability for the corporations. Many cases there can be, a, the corporation might not enjoy the uh, capital gain tax rate because they're directly investing from the balance sheet. And when you're investing from the balance sheet, it can directly impact your revenue and the profit margin. And it can have an impact on the final share price if your corporation is a public corporation. So I personally do not recommend any corporation to actually directly invest from the balance sheet. The second type of model that we have seen that many corporations are using is where uh, they are using a very traditional VC fund to invest in just to experience the whole thing. Because many corporations are thinking that, you know, we, we, we want to be innovative and we need to invest in a, in a fund. So what they do, many corporations are investing in the same fund and that fund is managed by a GP and that GP invests the money in, in different startups. In most cases, if this fund is targeted towards a specific sector, that well and good. But in most of the cases, these funds are investing in anything and everything because their main goal is to make money. So if your corporation is just trying to experience how this whole investment process work, well and good, but it does not bring any strategic value in most cases. So talking about those shortcomings that you know when you are doing that, most of the investments are made by GP's decision. So GP is making all the decision. There are multiple LPs. So there are multiple investors investing in the fund and the fund is investing into multiple startups. So in many cases, what your corporate goal is, is not reflected in the final investment because the fund manager who is a third party, he is just interested in the capital gain. And in many cases, he's not investing in the corporations in the startups that actually is interesting to your corporations. So it becomes a only a profit on the capital side. It's a capital gain is the main goal. The third model that we also see is very popular is CVC is managed by the corporation. This is actually another model which is coming up quite a bit. I have seen Intel, Microsoft, Qualcomm, these corporations actually are using this method. In these cases, many cases they're managing the funds by themselves or they're hiring an outside expert to manage these funds. In these cases, they're creating a subsidiary or a group and this subsidiary is, um, you know, the, it's managed by either their own employees or from outside expert that you have hired. And in many cases, it's a group or it's a subsidiary of the main corporation. <clears throat> With this model, uh, what we have seen is that sometimes, you know, the, the goal of the corporations or the business unit does not align with the startup's goal. Um, you know, you're focusing too much on the strategic play um, and, and so the, the startup's goal and your goal sometimes do not align and there is a lot of conflict. We have in many cases I have seen that, you know, the corporations which are following this model, that they're not seeing much benefit. In many cases, you know, it, it, the project is coming out to be a failure. Um, in this process, the good part is obviously you can invest in the corporations that you are uh, in the startup that you're planning to invest in. But in many cases, you know, uh, you know, their goal and your goal is not aligning. And you know, we are seeing uh, also another problem is that to, to work with these startups and to have a long-term goal to, so that you can also help the startups because there is employee turnover, in many cases you are unable to help them in a consistent fashion. Um, the, the other thing is that obviously in many cases, these corporations who are managing this private fund you know, within their corporation as a group or as a subsidiary, in many cases they are unable to you know, um, have the right people you know, managing these funds because many cases an engineer of a corporation is managing this fund and it is not coming out to be a very good situation for them. Uh, one of the negatives that I have seen is this model is that many of the top potential startups, they are not, um, they do not like taking money from this, uh, you know, directly corporate managed funds because they're also worried about their IP and intellectual property. Um, they think that, you know, there is a chance that, you know, my IPs will be seen over by this export corporation and, you know, our IP might be in danger. So we have seen some of those, you know, shortcomings in this model. 
So I'm going to talk about the last model, which is the model basically also um, we as Pegasus kind of you know follow. So this is a same model CVC. You're creating a CVC, but it is outside of your corporation. So you're creating this outside of your corporation. So you have less responsibility. You're investing in a fund outside, and this fund is managed by a corporation like us, Pegasus. We manage this as something we call VC as a service. So as a third party, we manage. But when you're managing by uh, this fund, we're making sure that we're investing in the areas of your interest. And you're also following some of the protocols that you have given us in terms of like what kind of investment we should be investing at. And so that these startups can literally uh, eventually can work with your corporation and, and, and can create a win-win situation. So we have seen some of the corporations have done that. Uh, we know that Apple actually at some point created a fund called iFund and it was managed by Kleiner Perkins. Um, we also know that Sapphire Venture actually manages a billion dollar fund for, for SAP. And these are some of the funds where they are following the VC as a service model. I'm gonna show that you know, we have actually used this process and we are managing funds for many corporations. So our main goal as we are managing funds for a certain corporation is obviously to hook them up with the global startups and so that they can work together. Uh, the startups gain, gain the experience from the large corporations because the large corporations know how to expand the business and the global corporations, they can remain on the top of the technology and trends. They can work with the startups and potentially in the future can also make that startup a potential m and target. So we have managed 28 funds and out of the 28 funds that we managed today, 24 of them are you know, privately managed one-on-one -on -one fund where we manage fund for a certain corporation and we're using about 110 people to manage these funds uh, with an asset size of about $1.5 billion. And these are some of the corporations that are working with us and they are asking us to manage their private fund. We manage fund for ASUS to Acer um, to Toyota subsidiary iShin and many others. And we have 36 corporations now you know, working with us in, and they are using our PC as a service model today. So I'm gonna show you a quick, uh, you know, an example of how one of the startups actually worked with us and actually um, it went very successful. So we, uh, I'm giving you an example of a Japanese corporation. This corporation is called Inotech and they're a public corporation in the Tokyo Stock Exchange. So we introduced them to a startup called Osaro. Osaro is an AI company. It's an artificial intelligence company. They help with the, the you know, uh, with, 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 you know, giving artificial intelligence technology to robotics arms. So you have seen any factory and any industry that they're using a lot of robotics arms. So what Osaro does, it provides the artificial intelligence technology so that these robotics arms can actually move by themselves. They can actually, they know what to pick up and how to pick up. So just to give you an idea um, how Osaro works, let's see a video. So here we can see um, Osaro technology embedded inside the, um, in the robot. And the teacher actually is teaching this robot how to pick up a triangle object and put it in a triangle shape, you know. Um, so as you see, the robot is using a camera to actually see it and it is trying to learn it. We call it a deep learning. And the teacher is teaching a triangle with a and the robot is in the process of learning, deep learning. And it learns. Then the teacher leaves. The trainer leaves. And when the training is done, we actually give a rectangle to the robot. And the robot is able to solve the rectangle, we have never taught it. The trainer has never taught the robot how to take care of a rectangle. We also give it a cylinder and it is able to fit the cylinder into the shape. So we um, introduced this company, Osaro, um, So this company Osaro was originally invested by Peter Thiel and J.D. Young 
in the seed round and we actually picked up their series A. So from the Inotech fund, we ended up investing into this company and we showed this robot to Inotech and Inotech was very excited when they showed the demo and they said like, this is something you can use in Japan. And it was a great situation for Osaro because Osaro was also uh, trying to look for a partner that they can go to Japan with because Japan is a big market when it comes to manufacturing and automation. Um, so, you know, um, Inotech team actually came up with a, a homework for Osaro and they said like they brought in the Japanese bento lunchbox, they call it bento box and Japanese, you know, chicken fry. And they told that if your robot can take this chicken fries and create the bento box, the lunch box for the Japanese, you know, lunch time, then most probably we can use this technology because that is complicated enough to prove that your technology is flexible. So we brought this back to San Francisco. They brought in a you know, robotic arm from Denso and they tried it and after six months, you know, we were able to actually, um, we are able to actually do that. And this is something that I'm gonna show that was shown on the Japanese television that the robot is able to create the bento box. And this was shown on the Japanese national TV. And we were able to uh, export the US technology and bring it back to Japan. And so far as we know that the Osaro technology is expanding in Japan. Um, and, and you know they're actually seeing a new market. So one of the things I wanted to highlight that it was, you know, um, after this was shown in some of the trade shows in Japan, Inotech, which is our partner, corporate partner, they brought this technology back to Japan and did this. And they got 60 plus inquiries from many other large corporations like Panasonic and Fujitsu and many others. And they were able to bring this technology back to Japan and then promote it in a big way. And, uh, you know, their corporate venture capital model actually turned out to be extremely successful because just by investing a small amount into this uh, Osara technology, they were able to bring it back to Japan and create multi-million dollar in revenue. So this is the beauty of the uh, number four model that we are actually promoting. And this is called VC as a service model four. So every single model has their pros and cons. Some of the models are very popular, but some of the models like the one that I showed you, VC as a service model, is something that most probably it has been turning out to be very popular and more effective because we are investing based on your choice and we're also investing in companies that are ready to work with you and create the win-win situation. Uh, corporate venture capital can be a real effective way to make your corporation powerful, trendy, and at the end of the day, if you like the technology, this is the best way to do your M&A in some sense. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to write me. It was great in you know, meeting all of you. Thank you very much.